Well, good morning. If we've learned one thing while navigating the COVID-19 pandemic, it's that there's no universal approach that works perfectly for every state. In fact, a one-size approach is not the best way to tackle unique circumstances. Our decisions have been based on Iowa data, the expertise of our Department of Public Health and our epidemiologist team, the CDC, national experts, and governors sharing their expertise and best practices. For Iowans, I think it's in our DNA to plan and manage through emergencies, to coordinate with our community partners, to come together and support each other in times of need. It's how we've powered through historic flooding last year, and that same will to overcome has been on display throughout this pandemic. Like people in every state in America and across the world, Iowans have made significant changes in their daily lives to protect their health and the health of others. In Iowa, it was critical that we kept our economy moving and open. Over 10% of our nation's food supply is produced by our Iowa farmers. Delivering the food and other goods Americans need during this pandemic was essential, and we're already seeing some signs of the impact of disruptions to the food supply chain, and was one of the reasons that nearly 80% of our businesses remained open. Still, the targeted mitigation efforts that we put in place temporarily closing pieces of our economy has had a significant impact on Iowans, families, and our small businesses that are such an important part of our economy, like Sneaky's Chicken and Farm Table that we heard from yesterday. In Iowa, we implemented a three-phase approach to COVID-19, stabilize, recover, and grow. Stabilization in that phase, we focused on protecting Iowans and managing our resources. We put in place targeted mitigation efforts to slow the spread, flatten the curve, protect Iowans. It gave us time to validate that our regional healthcare systems have the ICU beds, ventilators, and staff they need to effectively manage the care of COVID-19 patients and increase their capacity to accept more of patients if necessary. We met that criteria and were able to monitor that on a daily basis. And in stabilizing our healthcare resources, we've moved to the recovery phase, gradually shifting our focus from mitigation to containing and managing virus activity. With new tools available, we have significantly increased our testing capacity, adding surveillance testing and implemented rig rigorous case investigation, and we've increased our PPE inventory. New assessments and data allows us to better understand the virus activity from a state, from a county, to a community, and even from an industry perspective. Using the data, we can target our response with speed and accuracy, and in a safe and responsible way, begin to reopen the pieces of our economy that we temporarily closed. Two weeks ago, we began to reopen efforts in 77 counties. April 24th through May 1st, elective procedures could resume with protocols. Restaurants, fitness centers, and retail stores previously closed were reopened with, spe with specific protocols in place. May 6th, dental services re resumed with a phased approach, including compliance with the dental board guidance. Campgrounds, medical spas, and, and in our 22 counties, many businesses reopened again with limits on occupancy and reasonable health care measures in place and some wonderful guidance that's been provided and recommended by our Department of Public Health. Over the last two weeks, we have continued to monitor virus activity statewide and in the 22 counties where restrictions remained in place, and we've seen significant progress. The majority of these counties have achieved a consistent downward trend in virus activity and others have stabilized and are beginning to trend down. In a few counties, including Polk and Woodbury, virus activity increased during the last two weeks. We've intentionally test, we've, we're intentionally testing in those communities, which is driving positive case numbers up in the short term, but it's also allowing us to identify exactly where the virus is most active track its spread and scope, and put measures in place to contain it, delivering the long-term results that we want and need. We're also monitoring, potential, monitoring, the, monitoring, monitoring excuse me, the potential impact of our hospital resources in those areas. And even though hospitalizations have increased recently in a few communities, resources remain stable and Iowans are getting the care that they need. 
This activity is consistent with what we've seen in Eastern Iowa and these positive signs give me confidence that we're on the right path and we're ready to take additional steps forward. Therefore, effective May 15th, all restrictions currently lifted in Iowa's 77, count, 77 counties will, will be expanded statewide, which includes restaurants, fitness centers, and additionally, salons, barbershops, and massage therapy may reopen statewide with, again, um, some capacity restrictions, health measures that are put in place, and recommended guidance from the Department of Public Health. I've asked uh, Sarah Reister to provide more information about the business guidance, temp, um, guidance developed by the Department of Public Health. Sarah. Thank you, Governor Reynolds, and good morning. As businesses and additional counties prepare to reopen, I appreciate the opportunity to review some important public health guidance with Iowans who want to visit these establishments, as well as with business owners who will be taking steps to reopen in the coming days and weeks. First, it's important to remember that any Iowan who is over 65 or who is at higher risk for more serious COVID-19 related illness should continue to stay home as much as possible to protect your health. If you do need to leave your home, it's important to practice good social distancing by staying at least six feet away from others and wearing a mask or other cloth face covering if staying at least six feet away from others is not possible. Anyone, regardless of their age, who has been in close contact for more than 30 minutes with a confirmed positive case also needs to continue to self-isolate for 14 days. This is how we will continue to minimize, control, and contain the spread of the virus. It's also okay to continue to stay at home if you're not in a high risk category. Everyone, I, every Iowan needs to do what's best for them and that will differ depending on everyone's unique circumstances. The Iowa Department of Public Health has developed guidance that all businesses should follow as they reopen their doors to members of the public. These requirements include ensuring frequent cleaning and sanitizing of the establishments following the most recent CDC guidelines for cleaning and disinfecting community facilities. Ensuring that hand washing and hand sanitizing supplies are readily available for customers and staff. Providing visual reminders for staff and customers to stay at least six feet away from others when in the establishment. Allowing or requiring the use of masks or cloth face coverings, especially when staying six feet away from others is impossible, such as in a salon or massage setting. Developing appropriate leave policies, allowing staff to stay home when they are ill or have been in close contact with a confirmed case. And asking customers not to enter the facility if they have been in close contact with a confirmed case in the last 14 days or if they themselves are not feeling well. Businesses should also continue to follow the guidance developed by the Iowa Department of Public Health to prevent and detect outbreaks in their facilities. They can reach out to our department or their local public health department at any time for assistance and additional guidance. Specific guidance for opening of restaurants and farmers markets is already available. Additional guidance will be provided today as well for businesses that provide direct services to clients such as massages and haircuts. This guidance has been developed to ensure that Iowa can reopen and do it responsibly. We can reopen in a manner that protects not only the health of Iowans visiting these establishments, but also the health of employees who work there. Please continue to follow public health guidance and stay safe. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. Thanks, Sarah, and I just so much appreciate the work that the Department of Public Health has done to help businesses prepare to come back and really give consumers the confidence that they need. Um, as we work to safely open our restaurants, salons, churches, gyms, and other businesses while continuing to slow the spread, our businesses are doing so in a very responsible, thoughtful, and innovative manner. Many Iowans have been looking forward to getting back to uh, getting life back to normal, like going to the gym, and on Friday that's possible in all 99 counties. Gyms that have already opened over the past two weeks have found ways to comply with the requirements designed to protect their members and still deliver services that promote healthy lifestyles. 
Today, I've asked Tom Durkin from Ames Fitness Center to share what getting back to business has been like for his gym and the creative things they're doing to make sure that their members stay healthy and fit during this time. Hi, Tom. Can you hear me, Tom? There you are. There you are. Okay. I'm sorry. No problem. A little technical uh, mistake there. Thanks for having me. Do you want to go ahead and share what you're doing at uh, Ames Fitness Center? Yes, we're really excited to be back open. And um, uh, we have put in uh, all the protocol that you have developed, and it's worked pretty well. Um, we've marked off the exercise equipment, every other piece of exercise equipment to help with social distancing. We've done the same thing in locker rooms and, and throughout the facilities. We have all our employees wearing masks. We're um, taking all our employees' temperatures when they come to work each morning. We are shortening um, some of the activities in the fitness center so we've got more time for enhanced cleaning. And what we've found governor is that uh, the people that are coming in there's been so much in the press about the virus that they're self-policing themselves yeah. that the social distancing for us has not been a problem and that um, they're working together and I think a lot of people that it's been very stressful and what we have found is that um, people feel better by coming out and exercising and help trying to control their stress and also, we believe that exercise strengthens the immune system and helps combat this. So it's, it's been positive. I mean, safety is first for our members and for our staff. And we, we keep that in the forefront of our minds every day. And, um, but so far, um, it's been nothing but positive and we've had a positive response and it's, it's slow that, uh, we're making strides and, um, Every day gets better. Uh, thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And thanks for being flexible and adapting your operations uh, to continue to serve your members during this time. I agree, getting exercise is great for the soul and for the system, and it's great for the stress that we're all under during this really difficult time. So I just wish you much luck as we can all continue to navigate reopening our businesses and getting back to normal. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Governor, for your leadership. Appreciate thank you. It. So I know Iowans are eager to get things back to the way that they were, uh, but COVID-19, it's here to stay for a while. But with everyone working together, just like Tom just highlighted, we can and must reopen our economy. We can restart in a stable, safe, and responsible way. And we can slow the spread, protect the health of Iowans and their livelihood, and protect the healthcare system in the long run. I want you to remember what the data tells us that 80% of the people who get the virus will experience a mild or moderate illness and will recover at home without any issues. 20% of people who test positive can be significantly impacted, especially older adults over the age of 65 and anyone with pre-existing health conditions. For this population, COVID-19 can have devastating consequences. Sadly, the vast majority of deaths in our state are among this very vulnerable population, and 57% 50, of those who have lost their life to the virus are residents of long-term care facilities. And so for that reason, as Sarah also indicated, we urge older Iowans and those with chronic health conditions to continue to stay home as much as possible, leave only for essential errands, when you do, practice social distancing and consider wearing a face cover or a mask when in public and limit your participation in gatherings of any size or purpose. Iowans have shown that they are willing and able to exercise personal responsibility and to do the right thing. They've also demonstrated that they'll follow the new standards in order to resume some of the everyday activities they've missed. And that also means continuing to practice social distancing, careful hygiene, wearing a face mask in public if you choose, or if it's required by a business or other establishments. I believe in Iowans, 
and I know that together we can continue to move this state forward in a safe and a responsible manner. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Governor, a question about high school sports. Have you talked with the Boys Association and the Girls Union about summer baseball and softball? What has been your advice? Will there be games this summer? So I have not, but as I indicated yesterday, every day we're looking at the activity. We are seeing our positivity rate come down. We're seeing the days to double continue to increase. We're at 17 right now which means that the spread is slowing, uh, our hospitalization rates are remaining stable, and so as we, in a phased-in approach, continue to open up our economy, we'll continue to monitor and look for opportunity to continue uh, reopening in a very careful, reasonable, and responsible way. So uh, we're going to continue to look at the data. We're very uh, fortunate with the uh, tools that we've put in place. It really allows the team to look at the data in real time so we can um, identify what could potentially be some hot spots or see kind of a cluster of activity so we can get in there and immediately start applying some of the strategies that we put in place. So we'll continue to do that. And hopefully, um, if Iowans and businesses and everybody continue to do what we're seeing that they do, uh, we're going to continue to, in a very phased in approach, uh, continue opening up and bringing more things online. Yes, uh, thanks, Governor. The national um, reports are that Polk County is already a hot spot. And I know you said that this uh, relates to increased testing in Polk County. Yep. Um, but given the fact that uh, we're seeing cases rise there uh, and, and you are going forward with reopening, what can Iowans expect that you will do if you see something that uh, that qualifies as, as far as you're concerned as a hot spot somewhere in yeah. the state. So one of the things that we want to do and part of the, what we're using for the, you know, the recovery and the reopen strategy is to make sure that we can continue to manage our health care resources and we're able to do that. So we are increasing uh, testing and we're going to continue to build that out. We have test eight test Iowa sites that will be open you know, beginning this weekend and we're going to continue that through the 24th. We're doing uh, individual uh, sites testing as well with our long-term care facilities in Polk County, Dallas County, throughout the state so that they we're being very proactive from that perspective. So as we increase testing, especially in the hot spots, we're going to see our numbers continue to rise. But what we want to watch is we want to make sure that, that, that the rise in the positive numbers is not impacting our health care systems. And so far, we've seen our actually our health care uh, uh, our hospitalization numbers stabilize. We're seeing, starting to see Polk County. I think it's somewhat stabilizing too. Um, and then, and then uh, we want to make sure that we're, you know, we're prepared in case we would see a spike in any of the regions or any of the uh, counties that we're monitoring our communities. And then, so again, we have to make sure that with that increased spike, we still have the surge capacity to handle. Uh, those that would need additional hospitalization as well as taking care of Iowans um, uh, needs uh, on a daily basis. So we'll continue to monitor that and you know we'll continue to provide the data to Iowans so that they can see. But again, we must, you know, you need to limit your social gatherings to 10 or less. You need to practice social distancing when you go out in public. If you can't social distance, you might want to have a face mask with you so that you can put that on. We want to continue to just encourage uh, those that are most vulnerable to continue to stay home and really limit their uh, trips to essential trips. And I believe if we all do that and the thoughtful manner that I'm seeing our businesses really start to reopen, uh, we'll be okay and we'll be able to manage and, uh, and contain uh, virus spread moving forward. Rod, your efforts to that, go ahead. Thank you, Governor. Uh, first, I wanted to clarify if today's announcement includes bars and casinos. Nope. And then uh, also the plans to open up more businesses come at a time when Iowa has seen daily death counts of 18 and 17 the last two days, which, which are high for Iowa. Yeah. Uh, does that give you any pause in moving ahead with reopening the state? And also, I'm assuming the health department data and metrics indicate Iowa's coronavirus outbreak has officially peaked. That being the case, can you point to the date when that happened since yeah. various testing changes have skewed the data tracking? Yeah, so remember when we started this, our goal was to protect the health of Iowans 
to make sure that we were managing our health care resources, flattening the curve so we wouldn't overwhelm our health care systems. And we've met that criteria. And so now with the uh, increased testing that we've been able to bring on board with the strategic testing that we're doing in hotspots and with our long-term care facilities, we are able to look at data on a daily basis and really start to manage and contain virus activity across the state. And what we're seeing is our positivity rates go down, which is a good thing. We're seeing a good share of the state that has stabilized with downward trends. We have seen our hospitalization rates stabilize, which is a good thing. And we've also, each, each system has in place uh, a surge uh, surge plan so that if we would see a rapid spike in any of the regions or any of uh, the virus activity, they have a process in place to address that. You know, it, it's it's just awful uh, anytime we have to announce additional Iowans that have lost their life to COVID-19. And it is a lagging indicator. So this is, um, the deaths are a lagging indicator, is that correct? And, you know, unfortunately, as I indicated, it is the vulnerable population that's been impacted. And that's where we've seen the majority, the vast majority of our deaths have been associated with our vulnerable population, and especially um, in our long-term care facilities. Even with the proactive mitigation steps that we've put in place, just like when the flu, when we have a significant flu outbreak, uh, it impacts uh, those in our nursing homes as well. And so we're gonna continue uh, as we have working with our long-term care facilities uh, to make sure that they're practicing infectious uh, control, to make sure that we're providing the testing so that they can see you know, the residents and the staff so that we can start to isolate, get them on a road to uh, recovery and separate those that are testing negative with, from those that are testing uh, positive. Do you have anything to add? I think the only other thing that I would add is I think what we're seeing, and since we're able to um, evaluate data on a county by county basis, is you can really see if you look at the eastern side of the state, and you can do this on the dashboard that's available at coronavirus.iowa.gov, you can really see that some of those um, counties have peaked, and as increased testing occurs in other areas, we do expect to find, to continue to find increased case counts. The governor mentioned that the, that the tragic and unfortunate deaths are a lagging indicator, and that's because um, typically what we see is that once somebody gets diagnosed, if they are going to be prone to more severe illness, um, that severity really uh, displays itself about seven or eight days um, into their uh, Ill period of illness. And so those hospitalizations and then the deaths that occur, they do happen you know, after the positive case counts have been reported. So I think if you look at the data on the dashboard, you'll be able to see that trend in a number of um, the counties on the eastern side of the state. And so we've heard before that we've watched kind of uh, the virus um, move across the state and there are increases right now in Polk County and in some areas on the western side of the state, but we're definitely able to, to see to your question about the peak, Rod. We do think we've peaked in some areas and we'll probably continue to see peaks in other areas as testing continues to increase. Hi, Governor. Uh, first, the bars and casinos thing, just to oh. clarify that. Yep. And yep, uh, if you want to do that, then I'll ask sure. the next part. <laughs> yeah, so, and I'm sorry, Rod, I forgot to address that. They, they will remain closed. So as I said, we're um, opening up, we're doing it in a, in a phased, responsible, uh, and safe um, approach. And so right now, those will still remain closed. And as I said, with even with summer sports, we'll continue to look at all the businesses that temporarily uh, are closed. And when it's the right time, we'll start to um, open some of those back up again in a very, with protocols in place in a very uh, phased and responsible manner. Already. Uh, so Caroline brought up something interesting on Twitter. The survey for businesses to uh, say whether they have 10% or more infections, reporting symptoms, et cetera, uh, is no longer active. I guess my question is, what do we know about further food plant outbreaks, et cetera, et cetera? I mean, so many infections in Marshall County right now, has anything else met that 10% threshold? And uh, are you all planning to get that survey back going? Yeah, well, I'll let uh, Sarah answer that, but we have been very transparent when they meet the criteria, we report just like we've done with our long-term care facilities. So Sarah, do you wanna talk about? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have the specific numbers with me, but we have confirmed one additional outbreak um, at a business, um, Upper Iowa Beef in Lime Springs, Iowa. That outbreak has been confirmed. The reason that the um, survey link was taken down is because we want businesses to reach out to the health department um, if they have any concerns about the virus in their workplace or the number of employees that they're seeing um, that are ill. And so we'll continue to provide as much support as and, and guidance to businesses that we can as we can. We will continue to help businesses and facilitate testing for those businesses. Um, but we, instead of filling out the survey, we've just asked them to contact the department directly if they have any concerns about what's happening in their workplace. Hi there. Um, you've said before that businesses should accommodate workers if they have a risk factor themselves or if they live with someone or care for someone with a risk factor. Yep. I wanted to see if you could clarify who decides. If you have a note from a doctor, is that enough or is it still up to the employer to decide how they accommodate that or whether they accommodate that? Well, there's a lot of different factors that are included in that. So if they're trying to get unemployment, then through the investigation or through the um, outreach from the workforce development team, they go through a series of questions. There's several exemptions that allow them to continue to get uh, unemployment. As far as an employee with the work, uh, an employee and the employer, as we've seen, uh, they're trying to be very accommodating working with their work workforce. Um, but if they feel, if an employee feels that they're not getting uh, the response that they should, if you go to the coronavirus.iowa.gov, um, there is a phone number there that they can call. We have legal counsel that's available that could provide them with uh, any information that they may need that would be helpful moving forward. But again, as you heard from um, the um, the gym owner from, from Ames, I mean, they are doing everything that they can uh, to protect their employees as well. And so we need to make accommodations to allow your workforce to work from home if you can, or to make accommodations if they come back, if they have any underlying conditions. And if you feel like you're not getting the response that you, um, that you feel that you deserve, then there's also a recourse there through the, uh, the, the hotline that we have uh, for legal counsel. Hi, uh, thank you, Governor. I have a handful I want to throw at you real fast. Um, first, what is the specific threshold for increasing uh, mitigation efforts and how focused would that be, i.e. like on a county level or a regional level? Um, and then also, why have you stopped highlighting the new, um, the, the daily numbers in your oh. press conferences and you're not sending out advisories anymore? And then third, have the test Iowa test been validated yet? So, well, you do have a lot of questions. So let me see, I'll try to tick through most of them. Uh, we, we are not highlighting the numbers because we have, you have access to the data um, on the website and it's more frequent and it's displayed and we're providing a lot more information to Iowans. So we've made that accessible to Iowans. And uh, so it's there and accessible. If anybody has any questions, they can certainly call the number at the uh, Capitol and we'd be sure, we'd be happy to walk through um, any of those statistics with you. So we try to highlight some of them, but we're really talking about, you know, as we move into the second phase and we're talking about the recovery and starting to begin to open up Iowa, we're talking about the, um, how we are managing and containing virus activity moving forward. So the test Iowa validation, I want to, uh, the State Hygienic Lab is doing a great job. They are being very thorough so that we can assure Iowans that it is valid. Um, they have gone above and beyond. They are actually va validating 100 tests. And I think when we did uh, the State Hygienic Lab validated their procedures with CDC when we had the presumptive positive. It required five positive tests to be validated by the CDC and then they were signed off uh, as being uh, able to go ahead and run the test. So we're being very cautious. I think we've got two or three left, so we are really close. So hopefully by tomorrow, uh, we'll be able to have the system validated. And again, I wanna just thank um, all of those, especially um, Dr. Pentella for his great work at the State Hygienic Lab and getting this done and being very methodical and um, really taking every single precaution that he could to make sure that we could assure Iowans that the test was valid. And this is the partnership that we've um, established with the State Hygienic Lab um, and um, Test Iowa. I've been just very grateful 
um, very grateful of, for the partnership, and we're actually, you know, being able to look at um, uh, process, process improvement through the, the uh, partnership as well. So a lot of positive things coming out of that. Last question, Caroline Fox. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> Hi, Governor. Um, Dr. Fauci, in his testimony before the Senate yesterday, warned that reopening too soon could not only result in avoidable suffering and death, but could also set states back on the road to economic recovery. You've highlighted the obvious economic devastation to this state. So is there any consideration at all that reopening Iowa right now could actually hurt Iowa's economy more in the long term? Well, no, that's why we've done it in a very responsible, safe, and stable manner. And that's why I think he also said in those comments, Caroline, what the fact that when we're reopening, you have to make sure that you're not overwhelming the healthcare system, that you still have capacity in your healthcare system, not only to be able to deal with a, maybe a surge or an uptick in COVID um, individuals that would need hospitalization, but so you, that you can also continue to take care of Iowans that um, would need to be served through our hospitals as well. And so that's why we're doing it in a phased approach. That's why we didn't just rip the Band-Aid off or flip a light switch. We're being very methodical in the way that we move forward so that we can take the data that we're seeing in, the, in, in real time and really monitor it and watch it and be proactive in doing some strategic testing um, so that we can identify potential hotspots when we do identify one to get in there and do aggressive testing so we can understand who's positive, who's negative. We can isolate those that are testing negative or positive, get them on the road to recovery, and then really minimize uh, the virus spread and the scope of what we're seeing. So we're going to continue to do what we've been doing. We're going to base it on Iowa data. We're going to monitor on a daily uh, basis, and we're going to be responsible in the way that we move forward. I have full confidence in Iowans, and I have full confidence in our businesses to do the right thing. They've demonstrated it over and over since we reopened. They're being thoughtful and cautious in opening back up. These are customers of theirs, and often, uh, especially with some of the salons, there's a, a very close relationship. And so they want to make sure that they're not only keeping their employees safe, but they're keeping their customers uh, that they're serving safe as well. So uh, we're going to continue to move forward. We're going to do it in a safe and responsible manner. And uh, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll continue to see good signs and we can continue to get Iowa back on track. Thank you. Thank you.